Firearm Report. I am Andy Stevens, and uh, with me as always is uh, is Bagger Dubs. Today we have two very, very special guests. We have Caleb Giddings from GunNuts.net and GunNuts Media and GunNuts Radio and, and everything else you know him from. And we have another special guest. We've got Tactical Joe sitting in with us tonight. Say what's up, Tac Tactical Joe. What do you got, what do you got to say? Tactical one comms. Nice. So thanks for joining us, Caleb. I'm going to throw it over to Brandon, and he's going to lead us off with the questions. Sounds good. All right. Uh, yeah, no, thanks for joining us. I know there's some. Uh, we've had some fun going back and forth with each other. Uh, so let me find these questions. I had them pulled. I am Andy Stevens, and uh, as always, it's, uh, it's Bagger Dubs. Today we have two very, very special All right, guests. so give me just one second here. Are we having technical difficulties? No, we're having we're having user difficulty. So, all right, sorry about that. Um, yeah, so let's just go ahead and get started. So, really, the first one is just uh, you know, tell us a little about who you are. Uh, we, you know, a lot of people know you from Top Shot as the Rat or the Rat Fink or the Rat Snink or whatever the hell it was. But uh, you know, give us give us a little the thirty second bio. Yeah, uh, I'm just a dude who started a blog because I wanted to talk about shooting on the internet. And that got popular, and the blog got me on Top Shot, and then Top Shot got the blog enough exposure that I could turn it into a full-time job. And then uh, here I am seven years later, and really all I do is sell advertising now. Um, yeah, I know this really wasn't part of the questions, but we're going to stray a little bit. W tell us a little bit about that. How did that Top Shot thing work? I mean, what what was sort of the process? I'm sure you signed some and can't say some things, but how, how did sort of that all go down? I mean... I'm not familiar with that process. So what happened with that was it was the first season, and uh, Michael Bain, uh, Michael Bain was a mentor of mine and helped me get uh, my start really as write, writing in the industry. He sent me a link to the apply uh, to the application, and I filled it out completely on a lark. I had no idea that I would get accepted for the show, and then they called me back and were like, "Hey, we like you. You want to come on?" So they fly you out to they flew all of us at candidates out to California, and they did interviews with us. And there were some pretty big names there. Uh, Dave and Jerry and a bunch of other the, like the actual top GMs were there, uh, and we, they took us all through the interview process and definitely selected people for qualities other than their shooting skills. You know, on the first season it wasn't as bad as it was on later seasons because most of the guys on the first season could at least you know they were at least reasonably good at whatever it was that their discipline was, but uh, definitely pick personalities that would, they thought might have some conflict, mine include. And, and y'all may right. have to, yeah, and y'all may have to bear with us if we have some technical difficulties. Uh, Caleb is actually sitting in a hotel, so he may cut in and out every now and then, uh, but yeah, he's going to, we're going to hang in there and try to do as best we can. Cool. Cool. So, so getting back to the blog, um, what happened to the Keltec challenge? That was something I re remember you announced, and uh, then it didn't go anywhere. I think people were looking forward to that. What happened? Yeah, that uh, that didn't go anywhere because I have some data still from that, but that didn't go anywhere because I couldn't get uh, w without going into detail into some stuff that I can't actually talk about. I the the, the bottom line is I couldn't get the gun to work. I just it wouldn't work for any. Uh, for any reasonable interval of time, so instead of so I couldn't create a multi-part piece about a gun that I couldn't get to run for two magazines. And when I sent it, and I eventually just got so frustrated with the thing that I sent it back to Caltech, and I was like, "Look, this gun's garbage. Don't I, I, I can't deal with this." So um, yeah, and Caltech doesn't like me, and you will probably never ever see a Caltech ad on any of the properties that I'm associated with. I, I I've actually. Believe it or not, don't really read a lot of the uh, the guns nut or gun nuts or whatever. What what is the Caltech challenge? I'm not familiar with that. God, I I was gonna try to get a uh, I forget what it was. I forget the exact specs because it was a while ago. But I was gonna try to take a Caltech P. I had a PF9 and I was gonna try to treat it like you would treat a real gun and do things. You know, I'll run it through the 2000 round challenge and do some other stuff with it and try to get it to work right. And again, I don't remember the exact specifications that I had set up for the test, but I wanted to see, if I recall correctly, that if you took a Caltech and treated it like you would treat a Glock or an m &P, how it would perform. And, I mean, the one I had was just garbage. So it may have been a sample of one, but it was not a good gun. 
What does it mean to treat it like a Glock or an m and Do you mean to just shoot it, or were you like burying it in the desert and like dropping it out of helicopters and freezing it in the, you know in a block of ice? Oh shit! The Red Sox scored. Uh, I would love to uh, have dropped it out of a helicopter, but I don't have a helicopter. Uh, <laughs> the roof Larry, of the Larry Vickers. Building. Larry Vickers has a helicopter. I'll, I'll, let me call the lab and borrow his helicopter. But no, I mean honestly, it was just it was just shoot it. I mean, you know, you guys know how competition guns get treated, Glock 34s and stuff. They don't get babied. They don't get special treatment. They get shot. They get oiled every now and then. They get cleaned fucking sometimes. Uh, so I wanted to take a Keltec and try to treat it like that and see what happened, and it didn't go well. I mean, we would not. We I I, I do remember. I could not get the gun through two complete magazines without some sort of failure to complete its cycle of operations. Sounds like a magazine issue. Tactical Joe, how would you treat a, a Keltec? I would treat any other tool. Damn. Did he say he that's hit him with shit. his tool? That's a, that's a, <laughs> I, I think he says treat it like his other tools. I, I don't know. Tactical Joe is he's trying to be all perk sec or whatever the hell that means. Uh, I don't even know what that means. It's deep tactical thoughts. Um, yeah, so uh, you know, we've we've sort of been going back and forth and, and you made the uh, the comment about how you're there for Shot Show for business and we started this website to sort of uh, at first spoof you a little bit, now we're having some fun with it. So what uh what if we told you that we are getting our entire shot show trip paid for in the two months that we've been live? Good for you. Uh, I think that sponsorships are sponsorships are a great thing to get, and uh, it's it's always a difficult road to to go down to get sponsorships to get people to pay for stuff. And you know, when I first started doing this, I had I had a lot of I had a lot more sponsors than I have now. Uh, when I turned it into an actual full pro, for profit business, I get a lot less stuff paid for, but I get a lot more money coming into the company. So it turns into a company expense. So awesome! If you guys are getting sponsorships to pay for your shot show trip, that's great. Yeah, and we'll be sure to send you a copy of that packet in case you want to get in on a little bit of that action also. <laughs> That's adorable. <laughs> All right, so so let's say hypothetically, apropos of nothing, that if a shooter was wanting to start his own blog, uh, what kind of advice would you give them? Um, you know, How do you get a pile of free guns and ammo and money and everything that comes with being a professional gun writer? It's not a lot. There's not nearly as many uh, free guns, and uh, there's not as many free guns or ammo as I would like anymore. But the biggest thing that I've said to, and I've said this to a lot of people, is you have to add value to either your sponsors, your advertisers, or the community. And it's really easy for some guy on a forum to write a post trashing this or that. But when you actually go out and you have content that's funny. Uh, you have content that's original, you have content that makes people laugh, or you have content that makes people think, that adds value to the community. Even if it pisses people off, that's fine. Someone's going to see that as value, and they're much more likely to support you if whatever it is that you're doing brings them, you know, puts them in a better mood. You know, whether they like, whether it's smart content about training or great or actual quality reviews or funny stuff, bring something that no one else is doing. Okay, um, so you've you've traveled a lot, moved around a lot. You've taken sort of the Brandon Dubois approach to everything: uh, Indiana, Washington, South Dakota. Um, don't know why the fuck anybody would live in South Dakota, but have you actually found a state yet where you can win a revolver IDPA state championship? Actually, yeah, I won the uh, I won it in 2012 in Indiana. I actually flew to Indiana from Washington. And won and won the uh, the state match. There were even other revolver shooters shooting it that year, which was you know kind of nice. Is that similar? Uh, is that similar to my top ten finish at Area Four in single stack, where there was uh, eleven of us? Yeah, it, I think it was. I think there were seven revolver shooters that year, and I was the only master class shooter. Uh, and uh, I would never, ever, ever shoot the Washington. I would never shoot that match either. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I don't I don't know about that match either. <laughs> so we're gonna take a cool yeah, we're gonna take a quick time out. We're just gonna sit here and wait for Caleb's internet to get back. You gotta love hotel internet. Tack Joe off comms. Motion sensor going off.
It looks like Tactical Joe is tonguing his face mask. We we actually lost you, Caleb, at, like, I would never shoot the Washington, and then you went silent for a good 30 seconds. Oh, I can you guys hear me now? Yeah, we got you now. Yeah, we got you now. Okay. Uh, I would never. I said I would never shoot the Washington State IDPA match because the IDPA culture in Washington is bad even by IDPA's uh, usual standards. That means it should be an easy win, right? Uh, no. Well, I mean, I don't know. I, no. I the last time they the last time I shot a match, uh, an IDPA match in Washington was in. Let me let me answer the question. It's not easier. It's easier for them. Maybe. Sorry, Caleb, you're cutting out, so I was answering the question for you. And the answer to Brandon is it doesn't make it easier when the culture is bad. It makes it easier for the person who they want to win to win. Yeah, Everybody that's else gets covered calls goes. and shit like that. Yeah. Oh. All right, well, let's go ahead and move on to the next one. Uh, I think right. this one's Andy got this one. I think this is where Tactical Joe is really going to be able to provide some value, so I'm, I'm glad he's back for this one. So Tactical Hindsight, which is by far the most critical part of tactical thinking, um, you know, let's let's get deep into that and talk about your attempt, uh, attempted mugging, where you were able to defend yourself effectively with, I believe, a bursa and a cup of Starbucks. Is that is that what happened? Uh, it was a Beretta and a cup of Starbucks, but yeah, close, close enough. The uh, uh, basically what happened was was I was leaving my office in Indy, and dude came up around the corner and said, "Give me your keys and your wallet," and I threw a cup of coffee at him and. Uh, it hit him in the chest, and he ran away because I had drawn my gun after throwing the coffee. And my tactical hindsight is I probably should have looked the fuck around outside of my office because it had windows and then not gone out there when I saw a shady dude in the parking lot. Uh, I, th I think we need to live in condition white, and that won't happen. That's right. Wise words. Living what? condition white. You didn't under, you didn't understand that? <laughs> oh yeah, I was I was absolutely in condition white because you know I was leaving my office, locking up. I didn't really care. Were you confident that the Beretta was actually going to work if you needed it? Uh, actually, yeah, it was a, I, I, w I was confident that it would go bang, but since it was a twenty five, I wasn't really like <laughs> super. Good. I wasn't really super convinced it would actually do anything, but. Uh, at the time, I worked in an insurance agency, and I couldn't actually carry a real gun, so I just carried a little uh, pocket gun, a little pocket twenty-five, because the jet fire was, I mean, it looked like nothing in a pocket. Nice. All right, so let's, uh, let's talk about... Who carries a twenty-five? Yeah, that's, that's not a go-to-war pistol. Am I right, Tactical Joe? No. <laughs> Operators operate with forty five. No, now my war bag has nineteen eleven. God. Now God. I only carry a Glock forty with extended mags because everyone knows that forty is better. I thought you carried. I thought what was it? A para nineteen eleven? I forgot that. I read your website one day. Wasn't it of the para? I thought you carried that. No, I carry a. All right, now I'm carrying a J frame. Oh. Sounds like a horrible decision. It's not oh. a go to war pistol. <laughs> yeah, it's not a do much of anything pistol. Um, yeah, so so on the, the topic of shot show, uh, so last year or the year before, I don't exactly remember when, but the uh, the guy from Guns and Ammo said that blogs such as yours and ours shouldn't be allowed to go to shot show. That would just sort of muddy things up, and uh, people like Stone Cold Steve Austin and, and other folks should be there. Um, now that you, you seems like you semi agree with him this year a little bit. What's what's sort of the the flip flop? What happened to uh, standing up for the little guys? A couple of things. First, it was uh, Paul Halinski, who's from Guns America, not uh, Guns and Ammo, who said that. Uh, important to get those facts correct. Uh, the other thing is <laughs> we, don't, we don't claim to be a, a blog site. <laughs> I wouldn't. I, I would never expect you guys to let facts get in the way of a good story. Yeah. Thank uh, you. Thank you. But no, uh, the, the thing is really, uh, and I think you know when we talked about it or yelled at each other on Facebook about it, uh, I think really what frustrates me about Shot Show isn't up and coming blogs because I remember my first Shot Show and I was you know I had I was a nobody blogger and I got in because I knew a guy with NSSF. Uh, there needs to be room for new blogs for up and coming writers for social media to get involved in Shot Show. The people that I don't want going to SHOT Show 
are the guys whose brother's cousin's uncle owns a gun shop and they get a pass to get in the show and then they walk around dragging those stupid frigging carts behind them picking up free stuff and pointing guns at people I, that's what that's what really bothers me people who are actually you know passionate about the industry who want to write about the industry or want to actually be involved and take part in it whether it's from a humor blog standpoint or they want to be a gun writer or whatever those are the people that should go to SHOT Show. The people that shouldn't go to SHOT Show are the friggin' tourists who just want to gawk at guns. Those people drive me nuts. Yeah, they belong at AVN, am I right? Yeah, AVN or NRA, you know, whichever there you one. Go. Oh. So, so following on with that, like what if, what if a certain blogger went to like, I don't know, like a Turkish CZ knockoff producer and then just asked him like, what the hell is up with the triggers that you put in these pieces of shit? Would that be fair game, or is that... Yeah, honestly, and, and we actually need more stuff like that because there's a lot of uh, unquestioning reporting in the industry where people won't ask hard questions. They won't go to HS Precision and say, why did you guys hire Lon Horiuchi to be your spokesman? Or they won't go to... Uh, a, you know, they won't go to a Caltech and say, why don't you guys make enough guns to actually fulfill the demand, or why don't you make guns that work? Uh, and because there's, I honestly think that blogs are a great format for that, because some guys, sometimes people need to ask a tough question and be upfront about it, and that doesn't happen enough, and until that starts happening more, uh, we're always just going to be a little cottage industry. You, well, you, uh, to, to throw some kudos your way, uh, I think you were the one who broke that that piece of shit Keltec KSG trigger problem a couple years that. ago. That was yeah, dope. Uh, that has like a hundred thousand views on YouTube <laughs> or something, and Keltec still hates me. So, <laughs> they, uh, you also talked about being there for business the whole week. If we invite you out to get hammered with us and maybe make Pinkus come, you game. Yeah, absolutely. Getting drunk is part of biz doing business at Shot Show. Because I'm not saying that it's anybody's semi bachelor party, but it may be uh, it may be somebody's <laughs> semi bachelor party while we're in <laughs> Vegas, also. Yeah, no, I, I absolutely believe that getting drunk is an integral part of doing business at Shot Show. I've actually probably made more money in bars at Shot Show, usually from dancing on tables, but every now and then from actually getting a business deal. Well, if if uh, if Lady Shadow can hit the pole, you can hit the pole too. So. Um, speaking of the hard questions, I've got a, a, a hard question for you, and I'm going to pose it in the form of a riddle. How many shooting instructors does it take to screw in a light bulb? And I've already ruined the answer because it's, it's posted online. But uh, the answer is one to screw in the bulb and then the rest of them to comment online about how he wasn't qualified to screw it in in the first place. So what's up with that? Why is the industry like that? I think it's a combination of factors, and there's there's obviously a lot of ego in the shooting industry because it, the, the shooting industry, whether it's competition or tactical training, is very ego-driven, and so that's a huge factor in it. But I think another part of it is the is how crowded the field is right now, and everyone needs product differentiation. And there's 500 guys out there with beards and turtlenecks and hunched over stances all teaching you the same thing. So you've got to find a way to differentiate your product somehow. What was that, Tactical Joe? What was that, Tactical Joe? I told him to tread lightly. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Sounds like R2-D2 throwing up. <laughs> You're welcome. Yeah. He had, he had to mask the voice. He couldn't uh, couldn't have anybody figuring out where he lived or anything like that. But yeah, I think really it's guys right. need so uh, trade places. Oh, I was just gonna say product differentiation again and sound smart. So uh, go on to the next question. <laughs> yeah, no, I just was um, curious. Trade places for a day: Yao Ming or Jerry Mikulak, and why? I'm scared of heights, so Yao Ming is out, so I'd have to go with Jerry Mitchell. I'd be afraid looking down from that high. I'd be like, oh! So, so just because you're scared of height, not from the mass skills that you would actually gain and the ability to actually win more than one revolver championship? 
well, would I be able to retain Jerry's skills after I traded places with him? Because if right. I could, you know, like go into Jerry's body and take his mad revolver skills and then go back into my body the next day, I would totally do Jerry. Uh, do Jerry? I shouldn't say that. I should. I would yeah, totally would trade places with Jerry. <laughs> <laughs> We'll we'll be sure not to send a copy of this to Jerry. Yeah, that's, that's we'll, probably good. We'll cover free there. Yeah. So uh, you just surpassed fifty thousand likes on Facebook, which is seems like a lot to me. Um, what can we expect next from you, dude? What do you what do you got going on? I'm gonna ban at least half of those people from my Facebook page arbitrarily. Uh, so that no, that, in all seriousness, that, what about unbanning some of those that got banned arbitrarily? <laughs> Uh, no, no, I don't remember if you guys are still banned or not. I might I I ban you. I might, I might go ban you and then unban you just for giggles now. Yeah. Um, our, honestly, my big focus right now is uh, he is gun up the magazine. We launched a print magazine and an iPad app and a bunch of other stuff for it back in April, and just keep, and I, I mean, I run the business side of it, so keeping that going, doing advertising sales and uh, all of that is primarily what I'm doing. I have some cool projects in the work. Well, I think they're cool. I have some cool projects in the work for 2015. Uh, but hopefully, I'm hoping to actually just spend more time on the range next year than I did this year. I shot, I hardly shot at all this year, and it was kind of annoying. But hopefully next year, I'll have a little bit more support staff at work so I can get, you know, I can have minions do this stuff, and uh, I can actually go back and play on the range, which is why I started doing this anyway. Any 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 plans for matches? I know you went to Area Three this year. Any any anything on your radar to, to attend? If some you know one of your fifty thousand fans wants to come see you in action, uh, my the next match I'm going to because we're a, a big supporter of IDPA is the uh, Bug Gun Nationals in Massachusetts in November. So I'm going to go freeze my ass off in Massachusetts at the Smith and Wesson Center shooting the uh, the IDPA Bug Gun match and. I will be very cold. Uh, then next year, uh, I'm going to shoot. I'll be at the a bunch of the usual matches I shoot every year: Steel Challenge, BNK Cup, NRA World Action Pistol. Uh, I might even try to go to a USPSA match or two. Good deal. Well, that's uh, that's all we have for tonight. Uh, you know, we appreciate you coming on. It was uh, brave of you to actually. I think it was braver of you than maybe Pinkus. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, be sure to be sure to tell Rob hi if you see him around the uh, NAGSAW whatever conference you're at, and uh, we, we appreciate it. I just ran into Rob today. Thanks for thanks guys. It was fun talking to you. Any right. any final words, Tactical Joe? Any closing thoughts? Any closing thoughts? Stay frosty, motherfuckers. <laughs>